Day 16 of Broncos camp. It was the hottest day of the year, and the offense was also hot. We'll hear from quarterback Russell Wilson. Plus, Ring of Famer Rod Smith joins us on set. Broncos Camp Daily starts right now. Hello, and thank you for joining us here on Broncos Camp Daily. I am Phil Milani, joined as always by the Hall of Famer Steve Atwater and our special guest today, Rod Smith. Thank you for joining thank you us, guys. sir. Thank Rod you for Smith. having me. Foots. <laughs> I appreciate y'all appreciate y'all inviting me. Appreciate it. Uh, I know you had a chance to check out practice a little bit today. Uh, what do you think about this squad? You know, I, I like the energy. There's a, there's a lot more energy. Uh, you saw, saw a couple guys get into it, offensive, defensive, like linemen and stuff like that. To me, I think you need that. I mean, you want that competition. You only got three preseason games. We've got to find the best players to go out there and put a team together. And uh, the ball was flying around a lot today, and I, I saw, saw a lot of good catches. And so I'm excited. Yeah, at this point in camp, what, what are you looking for out of the players, uh, in particular the, the wide receivers? You know, they've been going for several, for a few weeks now. And yep. – they're a little bit exhausted. What are, you, what are you looking for when you look on the field at this point? You know, in the second preseason game is when you start developing your team. And for those guys, they'll probably get way more reps than they got in the previous game. And therefore, you got to go out there and show the other guys that you're ready to make some plays. Uh, we've had a few injuries at the, at the receiver position. All that means is opportunity. And uh, if you don't get that many opportunities in the NFL, especially with a shortened uh, preseason uh, schedule. And my thing is now you got to compress everything and you got to really show those guys, not only in practice, but in these next games, that you can help them win football games. Yeah. We asked uh, your old teammate, Ed McCaffrey, this last week, but a guy like Jerry Judy, yeah. it seems like he's on the cusp of really breaking out. What does it take for a guy like Jerry to take that next step? It's confidence, man. It's not, it's not that he don't have the skills. He had the skills coming out of college, one of the best uh, drafted receivers the Broncos ever had uh, as far as in the draft. Uh, Skill-wise, is there. And it's a confidence thing, but it's also a continuity. He's got to continue what he's doing in practice and translate it to the games. Had a real good game last week. Of course, you know, it's the first preseason game. Everything's a little vanilla, but at the same time, you make the plays you get a chance to make. And I think Jerry's showing that, hey, listen, I'm going to be a force throughout the league, throughout the year, especially if he can stay healthy. By this point in camp, uh, how difficult do you think it, it is for these guys being a new offense from last year. I know they've had a lot of time in the offseason to work out, but is that still a part of the picture now, or do they pretty much have it down by now? You know what? My, my thing is this, and a lot of people always say, oh, well, we got a new offense, oh, we got new this. That's an excuse. To me, new means I can start over fresh and give him some brand new stuff. Okay. I got to show Coach that I know his offense and I can make it work. Okay. And so based on what we were running last year, it didn't work. It didn't work out the way we needed it to work. But you could bring some fresh. That's what you need. It's like, and, and it's a weird example, but like in my house, I've been living in my house 18 years. You know what I'm doing right now? Refreshing my whole entire house. Mm -hmm. I'm painting the walls a different color. I'm painting the baseboards a different color. So when I go upstairs, it's a different energy. Mm -hmm. And so to me, quit taking new and use it as an excuse to stay mediocre. Take new and give you new energy. Go out there and say, hey, coach, I'm going to, coach is new too. Mm -hmm. So can we jail real quick and go out there and put this on the field and say, hey, listen, this right here works because we made it work. Nice. We need like those that. renovations to wrap up on time. <laughs> that's right. That's Come right. On. I like that. Right. All my renovations are long. It takes it take forever. <laughs> oh, well, one guy looking for a fresh start is quarterback Russell Wilson. Here he is after today's practice. Every day you learn a little bit more. You learn a little bit more about who we are, what we're trying to do, um, you know, as a team, um, you know, and uh, – yeah, I think it's all coming together. You know, it's all the pictures all um, coming together. You know, it takes time to you know paint a beautiful picture sometimes, and uh, we're doing that all as all as one. And uh, I got a lot of confidence in our guys and who we are as a collective team. You know, and uh, we're not wavering. We're just going to keep working and, and getting ready. That's quarterback Russell Wilson after day 16 of Broncos camp. Uh, Rod, uh, a guy like Russ, how much can he benefit from Sean Payton joining this team? Uh, I, I really believe what Steve said earlier about new offense. It's a way for him to renew himself, his confidence in himself, his confidence in his skills. I don't think that ever wavered, but I just think it was a, it was a direction issue. It was a, it was a, it was a, 
uh, just getting hearing the right voice. And I think he's hearing Coach Payton's voice is going to be different for him. This guy, not renew his career. His career is what it is. I think so many people were putting him down. I mean, even me being out in the community, you hear people, they blame Russell Wilson for everything. And I said, remember, this is football is a team game. And I think when you get the right pieces of changing the head coach was a huge piece for us. And it's going to change him. And I saw some throws today, man. I mean, the timing was better. And, and, and as you get into a new offense and you start renewing yourself, you start seeing the timing uh, that's way better than it was earlier in, earlier in camp. Yeah, now you mentioned the timing, but what are some other things that, as a wide receiver, you've noticed in great quarterbacks to be able to get the ball off on time, to be able to uh, hit you when you're in stride? Uh, what, what are some of those uh, characteristics? You, you know, the thing is, is, is it's, a, it's a gel. And, and quarterback and receiver, you gel and you don't say a lot. You do it from reps. you got to get the reps. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you'll see Russell after practice. He's throwing to Cut Cortland. He's throwing to Jerry. He's throwing to Mims. He's throwing to other guys. And the thing is, that timing, even after practice, is so good because you build a confidence with a guy. And, um, of course, I played with one of the all-time greats, which is John Elway. And there was stuff that would happen in games that we didn't even say. Yeah. But our, because mm -hmm. we did stuff in practice, so many repetitions at it, that you just get in sync. And it, and it works, man. And so I know Russ is developing that with these young these younger guys. And, and it's going to work, man. It's really going to work. I think the confidence is building for him that he said, I got the guy give me the right plays. I got the guys on the outside that can make the plays. Let me just get the ball to them and let them do their thing. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let's go down and uh, check in with uh, another weapon of Russell Wilson. Tight end Greg Dulcich is with Sidney Jones. Final few days of camp here. You know, for year two for you, how has this camp been for you? It's been good. Um, it's been nice, uh, you know, getting to see how this offense is working and, and how we've been building it. Um, and I think we're looking really well. I think, uh, you know, we've we've hammered out a lot of uh, a lot of details and we're looking good. Yeah, you've really had a lot of great few practices here. Have things just been clicking for you? Or what's been the key to really your success the past few days? I think uh, I think for all of us, everything's been clicking. I mean, we're getting real comfortable with the stuff that we're running. Um, and, and now it's kind of, you know, you don't have to think as much. You kind of just get to go out there and play and, uh, you know, you know, do what you do. I know head coach Sean Payton said yesterday that he will have you know packages designed to get you the ball specifically. Does it? What does that make you? How does that make you feel knowing that you're going to be really an essential part to this offense? Yeah, it's cool. It's awesome, um, and it's nice to know that I have that trust, uh, you know, from the coach and uh, and from the staff. Um, and you know, whatever they ask me to do, I'm going to try to do to the best of my ability. I know you had kind of a quiet, you know, first preseason game. So, what are your expectations for you know Saturday, the second preseason game versus the 49ers? Yeah, again, um, we're just gonna you know try and run run what we do um, and and make our plays as they come, and you know you know just kind of take what they give us and uh, you know just continue to build this thing. Uh, you know, as camp is coming to an end, do you have any specific goals for yourself this season? You know, I want us to just to just win games. I think that's the most important thing. Anything uh, individual will come, you know, if, if you're just out there winning games and, and doing your part for the team. And so I think, uh, you know, as long as everyone kind of has that mindset, we're going to be real great. Well, Greg, really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Phil, I'll send it back to you. Thank you very much, Sydney. Uh, 180 to another. 80, oh, yeah, huh? absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I really look forward to him having a better year. And not that he had a bad year as a rookie last year. He made some plays, man. And I think because he can develop, you know, especially that first year in the NFL, is a little you lose you lose hesitant. Mm -hmm. And I think he can really open up his game plan. And he's, we got the coach, we got the offense, we got the scheme and the players to get that man, that young man, the ball in, in some mismatch situations. I know you're tight with Shannon Sharp, uh, Hall of Fame tight end, great friend yep. as well. Uh, what kind of things would Shannon tell him? What, what kind of tips do you think Shannon would give? To Greg Dosage at this point in his career, you going know, into the, his second year. The thing is, 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 is just put in that work and that energy. The, off, the as a, as a tight end in the NFL, you can't just run routes anymore. You got to go and you got to block. You got to fit in position. The one thing about uh, uh, with Shannon, but what he did for me was I saw his work ethic, mm -hmm. and so he can see the work ethic of the guys who are older than him, and he's got to adopt that work ethic real quick. Yeah. and develop that confidence with the quarterback. Also develop that confidence with your tackles because that's who you're working with, that communication, because it's not always about catching passes. I know, you know, you got you got, you got got Kittles and you got Kelsey. These are some of the premier tight ends that ever play in the NFL. Yeah. But you look at the sync that they have with their quarterbacks and their offensive scheme, this young man can develop that over the next couple of years, and this year can be a real big 
breakout year for him as well. well he's got the athleticism for yes. sure. And his uh, fellow tight end, Adam Trotman, had maybe one of the plays oh, of man, beautiful so yeah, far, yeah, a one-hander there in the end zone today. It like, looked like Rod. I use both of my I use both at all times. I imagine that the running back is going to be a big part of this offense. Javante Williams working his way back. They bring in some Ajay Pirine this offseason. What do you think about that group down there? You know what, honestly, if you look at a Sean Payton's offense, they always had weapons at running back. They always had a two-headed monster at running back. And when New Orleans was one of those premier teams, they had running game, and those guys catch the ball well out of the backfield. And we have that. And that's why he went and got the guys he has. Uh, definitely get Javante back is going to be a big plus yeah. because that young man, he was he even had a stellar you know rookie year until he got hurt. But I just see some big things coming, you know, out of our running back position. Just you can put them in space, and they can make things happen in space. And that right there opens up the offense. It makes the quarterback's job easier. You can get the ball to these guys real quick. And those 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 short, you know, most people think of check downs turn into 8, 10 yards. Yeah. And, and that keeps us on the field. Uh, it's almost about 100 degrees out here, so we'll <laughs> let you uh, get out of here in just a second, Rob. But uh, before I let both of you guys go here, I wanted to ask you about your old head coach, uh, Mike Shanahan. Uh, did not advance in the uh, Hall of Fame process here as a, a contributors committee uh, voted, but he's going to get in someday, right, Rob? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It's, um, that whole process is, is, is very difficult because there's no standard. There's no standard. Because if you look at Mike Shanahan's body of work, oh, and you some can't other, argue against you, it. you look at Randy Gratishaw's body of work, Carl Beckenberg's body of work, we got some guys that have a body of work that is being overlooked, and we, we feel slighted by that because there's people who are in the Hall of Fame whose numbers are not even close. Yeah. And and for whatever reason that is, you know, we love Mike, and we just want a reason to get back together. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's our thing is when Steve went in the Hall of Fame, all of us got back yeah. together. TD went, all of us, John. That's what we want. We just want reason to get back together. And um, uh, my thing is, is I just, it, it's got to be very, very soon. Yeah. Hopefully, the, hopefully they realize they made a mistake, and this year, after this year, then we, we can get him in because he definitely deserved it. If you look at all the rings he was a part of, and his tree still got long roots in the NFL oh, right now. Yes. I mean, yeah. what do you want? The guy's still contributing, yeah. and he's not he's not coached in years, and he's still contributing. And so that, to me, is, 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 is kind of a travesty for the legacy that Mike Shanahan has left. Yeah, and, you know, just a, a great coach. I, I think one of the greatest – Coach to ever coach the game, and I may be a, maybe a little bit biased. Yeah. We got a couple of rings, but just the way that he treated us, the way that um, you know he he helped pick the players out, uh, he let us be involved with so many things. We just all have a tremendous amount of respect for him, and I'm sure it, you know with the other teams, they're happy that they're. Their, their, their person got in, but uh, yeah. we, we want Mike Shanahan to get in, and we need this guy yeah. in. Oh, yeah. 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 Randy Gratishaw, Carl yeah. Yeah. We got, said, we got man, like quite a, a few process. guys. but We just put up the numbers, and we don't get to vote. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, hopefully uh, one day they'll be like, you know what? Our fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's time. Because Recognize. you just put the work in, and I played with a bunch of great guys. And uh, like you said with Mike, I still, to this day, use things I learned from Mike Shanahan yeah. at home and with my grandsons and teaching them about standards and, 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 and being, like he said, no stone unturned. And we're starting school and making sure everything is together before you go to school mm -hmm. so that you can go give your best at school, then you come home and you can play. Yeah. And so, you know, those things are standard that Mike gave us, man. And uh, like I say, those standards reign supreme around, even still around this place. Wow. You talk about his tree. The Broncos are going to see his son uh, coming yeah. up on yes. Saturday uh, against the uh, San Francisco 49ers. All right, that's going to do it for us, for Steve Atwater and our special guest, Rod Smith. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us. Appreciate y'all. I am Phil Milani. This has been Broncos Camp Dean.